Now we're going to uh, have Sarah do her skills and support. She's going to talk about uh, creating a calm down toolkit. Yeah, thanks. So um, today I wanted to talk about what is a calm down toolkit um, and the benefits of using one. So this is actually like a physical um, basket or a box that you can create with your child. And the idea is that it just has items in it to promote emotion regulation when they might start to feel overwhelmed or have like really big, strong emotions. So we know that when we're in kind of an emotionally heightened um, state, our logical part of our brain kind of tends to go offline and it's not as usable as it might typically be. So, you know, as adults, we might notice that we have a hard time kind of reminding ourselves of what might help us in this moment when we're feeling really overwhelmed. And so obviously, you know, kids would struggle with that too if we as adults um, struggle with that. And so what we can do, um, because we can't necessarily expect kids to always know, you know, what they need in the moment or what they can do, is we can direct them to this um, calm down toolbox that they have. And that helps them to have some accountability um, and also to feel empowered to choose, you know, out of all of these options that they have in front of them, what's going to work best for them in the moment. So um, what kinds of things are important to put into a toolbox? So it might be different for every child just because, you know, obviously there are different age ranges um, and different interests. But today what I'm going to do is go through a couple of different categories of items that can go in the toolbox and then you can personalize it toward um, your own child's interests. So one of these categories is um, like visual calming tools. And so that can be things like a sensory bottle. Um, and this is an example of a sensory bottle. Hopefully you can see it okay. But basically, um, it's a really easy thing to make at home. And this one's pretty simple. It just has some glitter and food coloring in it, but it can help to redirect your child's focus just kind of by it, like maybe shaking it up and then watching the glitter fall in these really cool like mesmerizing patterns can be a really nice way for your child to refocus. Um, and I do have directions up on the website for how to make one at home. It's really simple with materials that you probably already have at home. Another um, visual tool is called a um, seek and find bottle. So I'm going to share my screen to show you an example of this. Um, so I love these because it's kind of a mix of a puzzle and just like a visual um, calming item. So this is another really easy thing to make at home. Basically, you just have to put a bunch of beads into a bottle and then put some objects in um, that like hide in the beads. So make a list for your child of all the different um, objects in the bottle. And then what they can do is just spend some time when they need a break, um, like shaking through the bottle and trying to find all of the items and checking it off the list. So that's something that um, certainly doesn't get old because it's different every time. Um, okay, and then some other types of items are just some basic comfort items. So that could include, you know, a stuffed animal, um, or like a soft piece of cloth that you might be able to put into your child's toolkit. Other things are like squeezing items. So that could be a squishy or slime or Play-Doh. Um, you could make your own stress ball with your child if you don't have one at home. So that's really fun and easy to make. And there are directions up on the website for that as well. Um, I'd also recommend some sort of like breathing visual and breathing tools. So um, deep breathing we know is really helpful and we hear about it a lot, but that's because it actually really does change our nervous system and how it's functioning in the moment. And so having some tools to help remind your child of what type of breathing is helpful um, can be really beneficial for them. So some of the tools can be just having like a little um, bubble kit in the toolkit can be a really nice way for your child to practice breathing or to have a pinwheel. Um, and I've also included some visuals up in the resource section of our website. So one of those um, is called figure eight breathing and I'm going to share my screen another time so you can see what this looks like. 
But this is just, I think it's so cute and it's really easy for a lot of different kids of various ages to follow along with. So basically they just like trace their finger along the figure eight and breathe in on one side and then breathe out on the other side. And the repetitive motion actually helps a lot in itself, but then, you know, it's a great reminder of um, keeping pace with the breathing and it's a fun way for them to practice that as well. Um, another category is just some general like fidget toys if your child might have a lot of energy and they just need to release it somehow. So I have another example of what a fidget toy can look like. You guys have probably all seen or heard about like fidget spinners before. Um, and this is a similar idea, but it's called a fidget cube. And so it's cool because it has like a ton of different buttons and spinners and little um, dials and clicks all over on every side of it. So this is something that is really easy to find on Amazon and could be um, really helpful just for your child to kind of mess with if they're having a hard time focusing. Um, and distractions can be really helpful as well to put in the toolkit. So things like, you know, coloring pages, puzzles, um, just make sure that you have some materials like markers or crayons to include in that so that it's really easy for them to use right in that moment. They don't have to get up and grab something else. Everything is right there and accessible. Um, and then the last thing that I would say can be very helpful is just some general coping cards that might be reminders for things that don't have a tangible item to represent them in the basket. So we can do a lot of things with our bodies that we don't need you know, a tool for. So for example, doing 50 jumping jacks or um, asking someone for help. So I have some cards up on the website as well that have some really great reminders for your kids about some of those other um, options that they have in the moment. So again, like what's the most important thing about this toolbox is just for your child to be able to personalize it toward, you know, what would feel best for them and to include a variety of items in the toolbox because we might need different things depending on what emotional state, you know, we're in or um, just the day. So, you know, try this out, make sure that your child is a part of creating it so that they're invested and they really you know, are excited to use it and then just keep it in a consistent spot where they know it's going to be theirs and safe and secure and they can always come back to it. Um, so let us know if you have any questions, but we're so excited to hear about what you make. That's a great, Sarah. I know you like, well, when we were back at Small Talk, I know you had a lot of that stuff sort of in your office too. Were there certain things that kids seem to gravitate more towards when you were working with them like in sessions? Yeah, a couple of things were really popular. So um, the sensory bottle that I showed you before, the purple one, I have one in my office that is just clear, but it has a lot of dinosaur figures in it. Kids love that and they go to it right away. Um, they like to just turn it upside down and watch the dinosaurs kind of float up and float down. And then I'd say the other really popular thing is um, squishies. Just while we're talking, sometimes I notice when um, we might be talking about something that's a little bit more challenging. A lot of times kids really like to grab something and fidget with it, but it can just be a nice, you know, tool to have, even if we're talking about something fun too. So mm -hmm. yeah, kids love it. That's awesome. Cause I think it's something too, that can be helpful for like adults too, especially if they have to have a hard conversation maybe with a kid or something like that, or one of their kids that they can have something to sort of just fidget with. Um, that helps them feel more comfortable too because just because we're gearing this towards kids and what they need these can also be things that are really helpful for parents too yeah absolutely I agree with that and it's okay you know to use those external tools that's 100% yeah. always okay absolutely all right cool thanks Sarah mm-hmm